Welcome to the Lockbox Lockbox! Welcome to the Lockbox Lockbox! Hello again, guys, and welcome to episode four of the Lockbox. Yeah, yeah. We're growing. I'm today joined by Senlex Borsha. Hey. And the blind Hello. Tesseract. Hello. We've got a packed show for you today. We've got loads of stuff to speak about, so let's start with some DC-related news. But yeah, uh, we, you should have uh, Game Update 27 live now. That went live on Tuesday. Um, mm, not the best, really, update. Had some refinements to the combat system and a huge bunch of bug fixes and stuff. And all, also the summer event back. Ooh. The Aquaman one, right? Yep, with all the ships on the water. I quite like that, actually. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's uh, one of, one of the better events, I think. But I don't think there's any new feats or. But there is some new new things. I think you can buy. Perhaps base styles, wasn't it? Dollar. It's yeah, usually think... base styles, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Always yeah. need more base styles. Well, yeah. I don't know. Mine's full now. Wouldn't know where to put anymore. Yeah, but did you see? Collector. Did you see Spittle on Friday Night Live the other week? Friday Night Legends at his oh. base, and he had all the different trees in it that we haven't seen in game yet. Well, he's a dev. He can just go, "I want this spawn." We want some yucca plants and uh, spider plants and things like he's got. Never seen that. You can only get the bamboo plant at the moment, can't you? And the get uh Venus flytrap you can get. Oh yeah, and the Dinner's the end table that's got a flower on it. Hydroponics. Oh yeah, hydroponics. Oh, we've got a couple at the moment. But apart from that, not much else in there. It's mainly been uh gameplay fixes and buffs and nerfs and things, isn't it? Yeah. I feel like I I'm... Have... Still getting used to like origin crisis and stuff, you know, running the raids a lot. So, don't really have much time for anything else. Quite glad that there's not new, much new stuff in this one. Yeah, there's still a lot of uh, ground to cover with origin crisis at the moment. I think Nowhere near mastering update, that yet. With this update, obviously, it's a lot of work's gone into the combat system refinement. So, at the front end, for like us, it doesn't seem like it's much of a big deal. But at a back end point of view, I think uh, a lot of lot of hours has been put into that to make these refinements that uh, that we we may or may not notice that much. But I think it's perhaps laying foundations for future things, maybe. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, people would moan that they oh they still see there's nothing in it, oh, oh. but they don't really know the work that goes on behind the scenes to fix things and. Uh... There's stuff that they're putting in now that you might not necessarily be aware of, but does help the game out quite a lot. And people have been asking for these things to be to be updated, to be fixed, um, particularly with the iconic anomalies from Origin Crisis. A lot of people just, you know, they would have issues with that because the they wouldn't be able to time the, the blocks or the blockers right. And so, you know, getting that fixed is definitely a step forward. Yep, definitely, as these counter mechanics are... Uh, ever more presence in game. Uh, couldn't it, McCann, yeah. What about the next DLC then? Yes. Um, so, originally, Halls of Power was going to be scheduled for DLC 8. That is no longer the case now. DLC 8 is going to be uh, Sons of Trigon, I believe. Dun, Which, dun, uh, dun. Yeah, so we're going to have like alternative Gotham, kind of in hell kind of thing. And I believe at the moment confirmation because uh, E3 uh, happened uh, last week or so and uh, there's a big uh, uh, SOE show going on there and it was great to see the devs talking on that and they released some stuff um, I think they said there's going to be three duos in uh, Sons of Trigon and two alerts, I'm not sure what level uh, what tier it's going to be but also going to be introducing some new legend characters uh, I think uh, Wonder Woman is going to be one of them, but I think that's going to be a purchasable one. Is it Wonder Woman and Cersei? I think so. They're they're going to be the purchasable ones, but then there's going to I think going to be some others included in the DLC. So Teresa magic... Tana was mentioned. 
I think that's correct, yeah. Very much Rage a magic summon. orientated DLC then. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't like magic stuff in the game. I don't know why. I just find, you know, we had the magic stuff with um, Demi. the T4 ops as well. The one that came out it, Hand of Fate, with Doctor Fate. God, his voice could put me to sleep. <laughs> well, those ops were pretty boring as it was. It was a bit uh, weary of them doing the tier four, uh, sorry, the four man ops for Origin Crisis because, you know, f the experience we'd had with Hands of Fate was just a bit dull, but the Origin Crisis ones were fantastic. And hmm. have, you, have you seen the screen cap from Hellscape Gotham? Yeah, that looks pretty good. There's some rumours about what, what's that building, isn't there? Yeah. So we're quite interested to see how that plays out. It seems to be kind of a bit more kind of solo, kind of dewy, kind of four-man kind of content. It kind of reminds me of this DLC of uh, the very first DLC, Fight for Light, where it yeah. kind of focused on duos and, and alerts and that. Until Origin Crisis, I think Fight for the Light was my favourite one. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, one thing I am a bit upset about, though, is delaying Halls of Power. So it's not even going to don't think it's going to make it to DLC 9. I think it'll be a DLC 10 release. Uh, there, was a, there was an article I read uh, this week, and uh, Larry Liberty was saying that uh, the, the, the tech uh, they want for, for Lee Calls and that is it's just not ready yet. Uh, and they've, they've got a lot of stuff they want to put into it, and so he thinks it's going to be probably... Um, going to be delayed till early 2014 so a bit bummed that for would, that that would follow with home turf though which was similarly delayed and was due in december of uh was that 2012 that was due um and uh that didn't come out until the start of 2013 um so it might be dlc 9 yeah, it could be, because we're, we're a month and a half into this DLC, so we've probably got about another month and a half for DLC 8. And then I think you got SOE live in uh, August, uh, so they'll probably talk a bit about DLC 9 then, and we may see a bit then. Yeah, I think <laughs> DLC 9 won't be Halls of Power, I think that'd be DLC 10. That's oh. my personal view on it. I think one of the main goals for the devs this time around has got to be that they're keeping these DLCs on time, which they haven't necessarily done in the past. But they seem to have a more strict timeline now of when things are going to be coming out. And you know that there's uh, going to be more content just around the corner, which I think is good. Yeah, definitely. Um... Definitely gives you a lot of pro to be uh, to be legendary, I think. Hmm. And also, it's been confirmed now that with the next DLC, it's going to be a healing power set. But we don't know what type yet. Yeah, that will follow the pattern, wasn't it? It was a hmm. it's usually controller, healer, tank. A lot of people are so, yeah, thinking that, that water for probably... healing. Yeah, I've yeah. heard that banded around a lot, the water healing power set, but Doesn't I don't know if that will... Doesn't fit in with the, the Trigon storyline, though. No. No. That would, that would make sense why they're also perhaps uh, delaying, look, um, Halls of Power, because obviously we, we've just had the controller, this one's going to be healer. It'd be silly for them to kind of release then Halls of Power after that and then not have a tank power set. You know what I mean? They seem to do three power sets and then maybe a weapon or, or something different, like utility belt or bases or, or legals or something like that. So it's kind of a, a, a similar pattern emerging. Are you going to be trying out the new healing power set, Bush? No, I don't think so. No? No. Stick with nature. Stick with nature. And, uh, well, I'm not really healing anymore these days, so I, I can't. No, I don't think so. Uh, well, I think everybody's going to be jumping on the bandwagon. Of it could be good. Yeah. Sorry. Everybody's going to be jumping on the bandwagon. Oh yeah, it'll be the flavor of the month <laughs> for a while. But I'm no, not doing the, that sort of thing. I'll stick with nature. I think we can assume that Anne her then will be jumping. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Next power set. 
I was really impressed with the visuals and the sounds for Quantum and if we've got any of the same people working on it I'm looking forward to seeing what this next set looks like as well. Quantum is very pretty. So anything else DC related? What are we uh what are we looking at on the forums or anything? Still lots of complaints about the difficulty of uh of the new T five raids. Not sure. Obviously, there's that hot fix to do Paradox Wave, uh, uh, which uh, fixed uh, a few a few things in it. Um, lots of people kind of still upset about that. Some of them have reason to be upset about. You mean like the flies? Personally, yeah. I mean, I, I've <laughs> never seen it as too much of a problem. It's it's just adapting again to it. Um, maybe. Uh, Maybe it was a bit of a knee-jerk reaction from the devs to to do it. Maybe they just wanted to to get something out there to 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 fix this, and then maybe they're working on perhaps a, a long-term kind of fix for it. Um, who knows? I would I would hope that they, they're going to change at least the tunnels because making the flyers run up those tunnels if they if they have to die and come back again is uh, it's just unfair, really. Um, and that's, I think that's the biggest issue with this fix is that it only affects flyers and it's, you, as much as it's, you know, been a long time coming that super speeds and, and acrobatics actually have a benefit in a raid, unlike in, in previous raids where, you know, you, were, you weren't able to target things or there was stuff happening above your head or, God, back cave three when you try to run through that as a speedster is an absolute pain. Um, it's still it, this is incredibly hampering to to flight users and that imbalance is the biggest issue i reckon okay that seems to be about it uh for this week for our dc related news i've got loads of movie news go on <laughs> you're gonna love this spoiler uh, alert spoiler alert maybe oh we need to speak about man of steel actually yeah, well, it's been out now yeah. for a while, so we can talk about it. I think everyone has well, seen that. Well, hang on. Be before we talk, I think we should have a big disclaimer here saying, from this point on, there's going to be spoilers. There is going to be spoilers. <laughs> spoiler alert, spoiler so alert, spoiler it. alert. <laughs> stop it right now and fast forward it until you stop us talk <laughs> talking we can, about we can Man of we can try and write in the comments when we start talking about this, and you could skip ahead to then. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll do that. So what do we think, guys? Man of Steel? Awesome. Loved it. I really, really loved it. I thought I it was I'm good. I think I'm going to watch it again. But I have some reservations. I thought it was good, but it's not quite right. I my biggest issue with it was that it, it they were trying to fit in with the kind of the realistic th style from the the later two of the the Dark Knight movies, um, and that it just didn't feel like, like Superman. Hmm. I, I forgot, loved it. I forgot for a huge chunk of the movie that that city was actually Metropolis. I thought it was New York. Yeah. Yeah, but that's just the thing that I like about it. My issue with it was that um, they they try and kind of explain away some of his powers. You know, he can he's really strong because Krypton had higher gravity. He can jump really high. Well, yeah, okay. How can he fly then? Why why can he shoot lasers out of his eyes? I mean, I can accept that if you're going to go a, su a proper superhero movie, just kind of techno babble it away. But when they try and make some of it realistic, but the rest of it unrealistic, it's a bit jarring. I think. Hmm. I don't I know. I accept problem. it. That's a yeah. it's a superhero movie. There's going to be stuff in it that doesn't need explaining, and you just got to take it for granted. I just don't think there was any You'll point have a five to make movie it if you want to explain everything. Into trying to make it more realistic because it's fantastical. It's a fantastical story. If they're going to bring people in to uh, bring new characters in for the Justice League, it's going to be even more fantastical. There's no point trying to have a realistic element in there. I mean, it worked with Batman because Batman is human with amazing abilities, but it's not going to work for Wonder Woman or Green Lantern or Superman. 
even still though with the Dark Knight movies, the first one has a very distinctive feel to it. It feels like a Batman movie. The, the city feels like Gotham. Mm. And the second one, it's kind of losing it a bit, I think partly because it happens too much in daytime. And in the third one, it doesn't feel like Gotham at all. It just feels like a random American city. Yeah, I mean, Metropolis is as big a character as any of the other characters in Superman. Exactly. They don't refer to it as Metropolis. There's only one scene in it yeah. that refers to it as Metropolis, and that's written on the screen. No, they do say Metropolis at one point. Do they? Because that was what what really got me was that oh God, I was I thought it was New York for a minute. I forgot this was Metropolis. It's yeah, when I they said that as well. it. Well, was something with a news uh, moment or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a visually fantastic movie. Um, but there was this odd feeling I got from it that it wasn't really a Superman film. Um, and I wasn't best pleased with some of the other choices that made in it as well, like with, <laughs> spoiler alert, at the end when he uh, snaps Nod- Zod's neck. Um, I didn't really you know, like that. See, I didn't, you know, I didn't I was, mind I, that I was too sat much. There. Yeah, I was sat there waiting, why hasn't he killed him yet? Why hasn't he killed him yet? Why hasn't he killed him? Oh, he finally does kill him. Yet. What's the big deal? I didn't mind that so much because I know that there's in the comics nowadays there's a big thing about oh Superman never kills blah 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 but back in the day I think uh, when the old version of Supergirl was first introduced in the comics she came from this alternate Earth and uh, Superman was there when he was like out on exile in the universe and he met up with this alternate version of Zod, Ursa and Non and basically they'd taken this alternate earth and they'd all drilled down to the the core killed everybody in this alternate earth so superman had no alternative but to kill all them with kryptonite he killed them all lest they go on to other earths or other planets out in the solar system and destroy those as well he killed them so i knew that he had killed before so it didn't really jar with me I, yeah i'm aware that it has happened in comics but it's not the superman that i have ever really seen you know anything i have ever seen superman in he has had this very strict no kill rule and that's kind of the superman that i like um i think superman is not supposed to kill people it's it's sort mm. of not the point of it even i could even give batman begins a pass when batman doesn't save Ra's al ghul at the end of that one um that's he's not actively killing him. He's not saving him, but you know, it's Batman, he's supposed to be a little bit darker. Superman's not. Superman's supposed to be this kind of shining beacon of hope. He's not supposed to go around snapping people's necks. I think maybe this goes a long way to explaining where he got that no killing rule from. Maybe this was the reason why he's got that no killing rule. Because he's had to do it once and it destroyed him. Well, so. like maybe it's just he doesn't want to kill humans, but, you know, Zod was, you know, not human, and he didn't leave him with much choice. Mm. It was... I quite liked it. Yeah, I, I liked no, it. No, don't get me wrong, I, I, I liked it, but there was... Because I'm a massive Superman fan, I'm a massive comic book fan. Like, as with Tess, I'm, there was elements that jarred. It didn't really feel like a... 100% like a Superman movie for me. Really? Now go back and watch the 1978 Superman, because I did a few days ago. And, okay, you got to forget about the effects and stuff like that, but story-wise, Man of Steel trumps it. Man of Steel In is, every the, shape and is form. the best Superman... Uh, it's, it's the best superhero movie, probably. Uh, exception of, oh, I don't know, The Avengers was good, but it kind of fell down in a couple of places as well. Um... But in terms Iron of Man one was awesome. Iron Man one was phenomenal. Yes. Um, it, but Man of Steel was uh, visually spectacular. I think they they did a really good job of casting. I think the guy that played Superman, Henry Cavill, he was really good. Yeah. Um, I think they got a lot of things right with it. But it's so it was a very well made film. It had a good storyline. There wasn't that many plot holes. It was probably the, one of the best put together superhero movies, um, but it was not the best Superman movie. Even Superman Returns felt more like a Superman movie than this did. No! No, Superman Returns. That's was just awful. difference of opinion. 
yeah. <laughs> the casting in that was awful. The storyline was awful. The costume was awful. But it felt like and... a Superman movie. Mm. See, no, this thing, I, I, did, I did go back. I watched a 1978 Superman movie uh, this week. Just so I thought, oh, I just want to see like the difference. And it's just, I don't know, it's just... Mm. It's ridiculous. You've Lex got is stupid. You've got Superman, though. Reversing time to save Lois Lane. It, what it's, other utter, it's completely silly. What other superhero could do that? But Christopher Reeve was yeah, brilliant it, in it. Stupid. Lois Lane was, was fantastic in it. I preferred Man of Steel, Lois Lane. Yeah. She was good too. You need a kick ass Lois Lane if it's going to be a you Superman. You do. That man of, uh, sorry, Superman Returns didn't have one, and that was kind oh. of one of the biggest issues with that. Oh, help me, help me, save me. I'm Lois Lane. Oh, just that said, I mean, it ha the uh, new adventures of uh, Superman, uh, Lois and Clark TV show, uh, probably had the definitive version of Lois Lane for me, and Terry Hatcher was just hit the nail on the head with that. Yeah, she was actually good in that, I have to, I have to say. Anyway, Although that may have been more of a a, a boyhood crush. Of a boy crush. But um, yeah, um, but uh, just one more thing about Superman. I was um, I was reading about Superman too, because I I didn't realise there was so much uh, problems with making Superman two. Obviously, Richard Donner, obviously, who made the, the the first Superman. He he was then directing the second Superman, and he filmed like something. They made it at the same time, didn't Superman they? Two. Yeah, yeah, so filming back, but then due to some of the stuff, they had to go back with Superman 1. He couldn't, and there was a disagreement with the studio, he couldn't finish yeah. Superman 2, and they got on another director, and that new director pretty much reshot everything. And mm. then I didn't realise, back in 2006, then there was a different version of Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut, what came yep. out, which pretty much uses 80% of everything that Richard Donner filmed and not this other director and i haven't watched that yet so i'm quite looking forward to watching that comparing it to to the the original uh release i have Superman seen K. it but i haven't seen the original one in a in a good long while so I, I wasn't really able to compare it i just saw the donner cut i've got some other news tell us does anybody like the jurassic park movies oh the first no. one Loved the first one. The second one, loved it up until, well, mm, the, the book was obviously better. I'm not one of these posts, people usually say books are better than films, but in this case it, it did because they do kind of change differently. It's um, Michael Crichton, I, 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 wasn't lots, he wrote the novel? Yeah, yeah. I'd see, with, with The Lost World, there were some good elements of it, apart from that screaming kid, you know, the girl. <laughs> Can't stand her in it. Who kill? Who knocks out those velociraptors while doing some gymnast stuff in that shed? Stupidest yeah. scene of any film ever. And then when the T Rex gets loose in the city, what the fuck? I loved that though. I loved no, that, that was dinosaur the loose in a retarded in a city. It just didn't feel like a Jurassic Park film. Having said that, Jurassic Park three. I actually really enjoyed, and I really quite like that one. Well, I, I think I quite enjoy all of them, but the first one's definitely the best one. Well, if yeah. you like the first movie, Jurassic Park 4 is making a comeback in the news. Oh, I actually knew about this. Did you know about this? And yeah, I was going to act the... surprised, but I thought no. <laughs> the plot has been leaked for Jurassic Park 4. Is there dinosaurs? Oh, really? There's dinosaurs in it, yes. <laughs> And uh, let me read this to you anyway. Jurassic Park 4, set in present-day Isla Nublar. An Isla Nublar was that the original was, island? That was the original island from Jurassic Park 1. It's now an actual theme park, as originally intended by John Hammond in the first film. It garners 10 million vis visitors per year and com is completely safe, until it's not. The park itself is described as very SeaWorld-esque and includes an area called the Isla Nublar Lagoon. That means underwater dinos for the first time. No indication of what kind... But this concept art showing one of the, aqu the aquatic dinos as part of a show jumping out of the lagoon and eating a shrunk up great white shark like it was a fish for a dolphin at SeaWorld. And another interesting bit of news from it is the usually menacing velociraptors, which will finally be muzzled mm -hmm. along with the T Rex until they're not, 
will actually be used to help fight the threat which begins in the form of a new dinosaur not seen in any of the previous films and not disclosed to us. Shows to be much smarter than originally thought and is the main cause of havoc breaking out at the park. So what so do we think? like Jurassic Park 1 all over again. Yeah, coming in full circle. It seems like they're doing a Terminator 2 when they're making mm. the Velociraptors the uh, heroes. <laughs> but it's, uh, How it's can actually going to be... Raptor heroes? Well, they're going to be uh, domesticated. They're going to be trained from birth. They're going to be tamed. Mm, sounds mm. stupid. But we'll, a we'll actually see Jurassic Park as it was intended to be. A fully operational uh, amusement theme park that people actually visit. But then it all goes wrong. That would be interesting to see. Mm. But there's going to be like... You say another kind of super dinosaur, like there was in Jurassic Park 3. Was yeah. the one in Jurassic Park 3 made up or something? No, I don't think it was. I think it was one that they actually found a skeleton for. Uh, it was like a super T-Rex, wasn't it? Or bigger than a T-Rex. But I'll be interested to see these aquatic dinos, because that's something that hasn't been touched on in the previous films. And I like the idea of this, uh, this water show with the uh, dinosaurs that train like dolphins to jump out and eat stuff. So, no, it could be good. I hope they did then focus quite a lot on, you know, genetically modified, and they go into that a bit to, to make it seem a bit <laughs> real. That's why perhaps they can domesticate some of these dinosaurs. Mm. Well, it was all, it's all about uh, genetic modification and uh, bringing stuff back to life, so I suppose they could do anything with the storyline, but I wouldn't like to see anything that's been specifically made up for the movie. It should all have some bearing in dinosaurs that actually existed, I think. Hmm. Is there any um, returning cast members? I don't know, because the past three have had uh, characters from the first movie, haven't they? Like, number two had yeah. Jeff Goldblum. Number three had Sam Neill returning. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. Maybe they'll uh, bring someone back. Maybe the kids. You know what they'll do? The kids from the first Yeah, one. I reckon the kids would be back, but they'd be adults now, and they'd be dinosaur yeah. experts. <laughs> the kids in the first one are actually pretty good. Yeah, I've got a bit. Kids in films I hate. Yep. But, um... But no, that, that that's one one film actually where they they got the cast in really good with uh with the kids in the first one, unlike the second one. Mm. Well, I've got some other news. You always do. About Spider-Man Two. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Ah, I've, I, I've still I know not what seen this Amazing Spider-Man actually. actually. I I what? know exactly what you're gonna say. Go on, say it. It's going to be about that Watson, Mary Jane Watson. Mary Jane Watson, yeah. What What about and her? That they've cut her out in the second one. Yeah, well apparently she was cast. There was a certain mem uh, person they had brought in to play Mary Jane in the second one. And there was a bit of a hoo-ha in the media about it. Because people were saying that she wasn't pretty enough. Which, uh, which is insulting in its own thing. But apparently now they want to explore the relationship between... Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy more so that <clears throat> there may actually only be a, a cameo for Mary Jane Watson at the end of Spider-Man 2 and the real story of Mary Jane is going to be in Spider-Man 3 and Spider-Man 4 again back to Spider-Man 3 and Spider-Man 4 they're already in the pipeline to be made because the studio has enough faith in those movies to actually commit to those but it looks like the new person that's going to be Mary Jane does have red hair so that's a start yeah I mm. heard it's a pretty she key part for from... it? yeah yeah I heard she was cut from a second one because she couldn't do the third one and that was under reasons as well oh that's right yeah yeah she's uh she's actually been cast uh in this new uh, movie franchise it's going to be like the next Twilight I can't remember the name of it but the one the woman that's originally going to play Mary Jane she's going to be a big part of these new movies so she she can commit to see, uh, future Spider-Man movies 
I hate it when they change actors for characters. I didn't like it when they'd done it for The Dark Knight. Hmm. Well, apparently she'd she'd already filmed quite a bit for Spider-Man 2, and they're just cutting all of that. They might actually cut Mary Jane out of it totally and just have her in a cameo. I don't know. I, I like the first su- uh, Spider-Man movie. I keep saying Superman now, but I think Spider-Man's going to be... Spider-Man 2 is going to be really good. It's got the Rhino and um, who else? Electro as the big bads. And we'll also get a glimpse of Norman Osborn, who's the head of Oscorp, and his son, Harry Osborn. And if you know the original Spider-Man trilogy, you'll know that they were played by... William Defoe, wasn't it? As Norman Osborn, and I can't remember the name of the guy who played Harry, who's Peter's best friend. I have some different sequel news. Go on. Independence Day 2. What? Boom. Yep. And this is apparently uh, without uh, Will Smith. What? Because he's going to be too expensive. The interesting thing about this is, and I don't know how much of this story you know, but Independence Day was uh, was the plot for Stargate the movie 2. Um, because they made the Stargate movie, and then the 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 producers, uh, oh, so the the production company decided to go ahead with the TV series, which made Stargate SG One. Um, the director uh, didn't really like this because he'd planned a trilogy of movies, um, and the second one was going to be about how these aliens were coming to Earth to get vengeance after they'd blew up Ra in the first one. So he turned a lot of that into Independence Day. Um, the third one, and I, this is just a speculation on my part, um, there was the 10,000 BC movie they also made. Um, Roland Emmerich was the director. Um, he made this 10,000 BC movie, which was mostly dire, but it was set in kind of Earth's ancient past, where uh, a band of tribal humans were ruled over by uh, a couple of uh, super intelligent people that seemed to be possessed by aliens or something like that. It very much struck me as being um, the origin story for Stargate. Um, so I always kind of wondered if that was what the third movie was supposed to be. Um, yeah, and Independence Day 2 is apparently going to be released on July the 3rd, 2015, which is 19 years after the original. That's some fast fact-checking there, Flame. <laughs> yeah, because as people know, the original one was released on July the 4th, Independence Day in America. It was. I enjoyed the first one, uh, I guess. I think it was good, good for its time. Yeah, I, th- I think Will Will Smith, he's he's not needed to to come back. I don't think. But then again, you would think maybe he would need actually a good movie after the utter shite that was After Earth. I haven't seen that yet. It's supposed to be terrible, but I've I've not seen it either. I've got one last bit of Star Wars news, and it's only very quick. Uh, a bit of news released. And it was actually a cryptic casting breakdown from apparently Star Wars 7. And it's just a description of the characters that they're looking for to be in Star Wars 7. And ah, yes, they... I've read this. you got to read them, mate. Go on, yeah. Mate. A young man aged between 20 and 25, witty and smart, fit but not classically handsome. A man in his late 20s, also fit, but this one is handsome and confident. Late teenage girl, independent, good sense of humour, also physically fit. A second young female, also late teens, tough, smart and physically fit. A man in his 40s, obviously physically fit. This one is a military type. A man of around 30 or so. This one is an intellectual type, that's me. That's the part that I'll be playing. And uh, finally, a guy aged around 70, strong opinions and tough. And there's been a lot of speculation in the news about who these people are going to be, and people are saying they're going to be Han Solo and Princess Leia's kids from the Expanded Universe, but there's been no confirmation of that yet, but I suppose we'll have to wait and see. So you can make up your own minds who those 
um, descriptions would fit from the expanding universe, or they might not go with the expanding universe at all. They might be uh, totally brand new characters made up specifically for the film. I got a question about you know the Star Wars expanded universe. Yeah, go on. How did George Spider Lucas Man, feel about this? <laughs> no, 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 no. Because yeah, George Lucas, he's got a quite uh, well, he did have quite a tight control on Star Wars and stuff. So, h how did he allow this expanded universe and I you know, think licensing he liked it because this? it made him money. Mm. It was all it was... overseen by him as well. He had executive, he had executive like control over the storylines and everything in the expanded universe as well. Cause... And ultimately, if it's not in the movies, it's it's not you know his universe. So he could quite easily just uh, completely negate it by making his own film. Just because it's officially licensed stuff doesn't make it. Um, you know, movie canon. Mm. There was actually a there was a comic released between uh, the the launch of A New Hope and the launch of uh, Empire Strikes Back, in which uh, Luke and Leia actually got together. What? Um, it was only this only happened once because he'd put out this sort of injunction against it happening. But I don't know if somebody just didn't get the memo or what it was. But there was one comic in which they got together. That's disgusting. Right, I, that's well, disgusting. I've, I've got the uh, Blu-ray box set of the Star Wars movies. And some of the deleted scenes are quite interesting. There was a deleted scene from uh, Empire Strikes Back, actually, where Luke and Leia start to get a little bit close again. Too close. They almost kiss. But then they don't. And that was cut out by George Lucas after he decided then to make them brother and sister. But it did look for a while that uh, there was going to be a love triangle between Luke, Leia and Han. We need to do our inter interview, don't we? Hello, guys. And this week we have with us Mitchell, who we are going to be interviewing. Hi, Mitch. How are you? Hello. 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 How are you doing? Great. Good to be here. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Mitch. Uh, my name is Mitchell. I play a nature healer in DC. I like healing people. Uh, is nice. that what you in every game you play? <laughs> Near enough. Healing classes are usually played by females. You sure not female? <laughs> Yeah, Mitch. <laughs> well, last time I checked, everything's still there. <laughs> Where's this passion for healing come from? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, when I first started playing the game, I just looked at all the different powers that were available, and nature just looked awesome. So I started with that. And then When you play like first-person shooters, you're always the medic? Um, I didn't used to be, because I mean, DC is pretty much the, well, it's the second MMO I played. Uh, yeah, the uh, Guild Wars. Played that for about a year before DC came out. What attracted you to DC then, when you first started playing? I didn't know anything about it. I just saw it on the uh, Steam page when it first came out and watched the video that came with it and saw that you could pick up a helicopter and throw it at people and I thought, that sounds awesome <laughs> and the rest Imagine is history Imagine your disappointment when you yeah. couldn't pick up a helicopter Trailers made it sound awesome So tell us a bit about your story from the beginning of DC when you first joined Who did you meet? Did you meet anybody, any interesting people? How did you get into Odyssey? I started off just messing about, DPSing stuff, and then as soon as I got to level 10, the healer role opened up to me. I thought, oh, I definitely want to play a healer. So I changed over to healer role and never left it. And I've never left it since, really. I leveled in healer mode because I thought, that's what I should do, as I want to play a healer. You're crazy! <laughs> so I did everything with nerf damage and 
healing powers on my bow. Was that the most embarrassing thing about your levelling up process? I'd say so, I can't think of anything else. Nothing else at all? Nothing else at all, Tess. I don't know what you're talking about. I just, I am sure I heard from someone a story, somebody just whispered in my ear that you uh, you didn't realise you could buy the uh, super flight movement until you were level 30. Um, I seem to recall having a bit of an issue with skill points and not really caring about them and just plonking them anywhere I wanted, but maybe in someone else, I'm not sure. I did exactly the same. I've always played as DPS, but I think I had most of mine in critical healing. Skill points and stuff. Yeah, that's <laughs> handy. <laughs> so yeah, then I, uh, I met Zipperman one day, walking about. Who? Zipperman. Sadly could not be with us this evening. And he invited me into Defenders, where I met the wonderful Flame Fury, <gasps> and um, switched characters as Cold Fuzz John. Sorry, Cold Fusion. Pet name. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we started doing raids. And me and Flame used to do duos every day. Every night. <laughs> and then he left us. Yep. Left me all alone in Defenders. I he did. Went off and joined what used to be, well, the early stages of Odyssey. Silver Age. And then when Zipperman couldn't be bothered anymore. <laughs> we all left and joined Silver Rage. That's unlike well. him. <laughs> yes, he's very professional. So yeah, then joined Silver Rage and been with the same group of people pretty much since the start. You're widely regarded as one of the, the best nature healers. How does it feel to have such a fan base? Wonderful, Senlex. <laughs> nice, this good. People enjoy watching people heal, and that's always good. Could always use more heals in the game. Unless these DPS. I think <clears> you were <throat> one of the first people to put out a uh, an actual healing guide, a nature guide. Or you, you put out one of the best regarded nature guides. Do you think that was like goes a long way to giving you this reputation that you have as one of the best healers in the game? Um, Possibly. I mean, there wasn't, I think it was quite a good, I wouldn't say it's the best healing guide, but it's quite a good one for the uh, PC side anyway. There's some excellent ones written by people from the PlayStation 3 side. Always happy to answer questions, I think that helps as well. How do you think you've evolved as a healer? Is it very much trial and error for you, or was you examining all the patch notes and... Well, to see. you've got to examine all the patch notes and test stuff out after every single patch to see what's been what's been changed, if there's been any ninja nerfs or buffs. But my loadout has been pretty much the same from when I started playing. There's one, one power on my slot that I just keep on swapping about. Which is? Yeah. Um, cross pole. Hive mind harvest. <laughs> yeah. When I started playing the game, it was cross pole, I think. Then I went over to hive mind and realised how amazing that was. This was like in the early stages when it used to give crit chance and everything, especially in insect form. Don't know why I brought that up, but yeah, insect <laughs> form. <laughs> in tell us about awesome. insect form. Hive mind. Well, it used to be awesome. It used to increase your crit chance by a decent amount. Didn't use to nerf your heals like people said. And it used to be great. Combined with Hive Mind, you, your crit chance was just mental. What happened? Like all good things, it got destroyed. <laughs> you looking forward to the new, uh, well, the upcoming nature and sorcery? Uh, revamp update? Not particularly, no. But. Because <laughs> I don't want it to change it. But yeah, I'm a bit worried what they're going to change about it. I mean, there's a few things, like a, super a couple of the supercharges are just naff. One of them literally does nothing. And the other one would be good, but for some reason it's 100%, even though it does the exact same thing as a couple of the other supercharges, like uh, Bunker Buster and that. And they're 50%. Do 
So but we'll just have to wait and see. If they if they completely messed up nature, they they made it really quite bad in some way. Would you be forced to change, or would you work with it? Work with it initially until possibly something better comes along. I mean, the next DLC is going to have a healing power turn, isn't it? So we'll have to see what interesting mechanic is behind that and what type of healing set that is. I mean, it's been mentioned that it's going to be quite, uh, like a demonic type thing, which I'm not really interested in. No, but we'll have to see. Do you think it's going to be much like sorcery? Um, possibly. I mean, electric was a bit of both, really. It had powers from quite a few of the power sets, so... We'll just have to see. Why do you think you've stayed with nature over the other healing power sets? I know electric was another new one that was brought in, but why, why have you stayed as nature and not switched over to either of the other two? Well, nature just interests me more than sorcery and electric to begin with. And I just like that it's fast. Everything can clip with everything. And you can just dart about not being tied down while you're doing a long cast time or anything like that. Hmm. I like the nature DPS. <laughs> yeah, that needs a bit of work. Pretty slow. But yeah, that's pretty much it really. It's fast. Everything can clip with each other. If someone needs a heal, you can pop it, and it's the cooldown on it is gone a couple of seconds later at most. Whereas all the rest, they do have quite a lengthy cooldown on a lot of their main heals. The burst on nature is handy for everything. It's just well-rounded, really. you got excellent burst and excellent just topping up powers. So what are your hopes for the new healing power set? What would you like to see? Just something different, really. I mean, they did well with Electric. That had the 35% uh, power that came with it, that mechanic. So, just an interesting mechanic, really. But like I say, if it's demonic, I'm not interested, really. You don't like demons? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got big white wings. I'm not a demon. <laughs> That's true. So, we've heard quite a bit about Mitchell, the character. Tell us about... Mitchell, the person. Well, not to go into like my life story. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 25 from Manchester. Um, I like chickens. Oh, we heard. <laughs> but I'd bring it up before you did. <laughs> to rephrase that, I don't like chickens. I like eating chicken. <laughs> okay. Just to clarify that. So if anyone's out there on the EU PC and you get any of these rubber chickens, the the white trash, send, send them your mail to Mitchell. Let's see if we can fill his mail up with rubber chickens. <laughs> I do have it on good authority, and it has been tested by quite a number of people that eating chicken before you do a raid does in fact increase your heels. Oh, really? You heard it here first, guys. <laughs> So what, um, what other games do you play besides um, DC? Um, Guild Wars 2 at the moment. I mean, before Guild Wars, the first one, and DC, everything would just used to be first-person shooters, pretty much. So Battlefield, the early Call of Duties. But I stopped pretty much playing them, and uh, odd payday is all a all the shooting to do now. Yeah, oh. there's a new one coming out as well. So how do you juggle your uh, duties as a healer in Odyssey with playing Guild Wars and other games as well? With great difficulty and basically ignoring some of the other games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's never enough hours in the day, is there? There's not, no. I mean, I try to get on Guild Wars as much as I can, but it just doesn't happen. <laughs> I think I everything know. else goes out the window when uh, there's a new DLC in DC. Oh, yeah, definitely. Everybody focuses on that. Oh, yeah. Any Anytime there's something new in DC, I mean, DC's always going to be the, the game to stay with. 
Mm. I've got a question for Mitch. Oh, God. No, it's not too bad, actually. <laughs> um, of all of the, the different runs that you've done, the uh, the, the four mans, the wolf raids, everything that, that uh, has been kind of unique to nature and, and the power set and how you play it, which was the most challenging at the time? Flame might agree with me on this one, but the four man the, uh... of Inner Sanctum, yes. <laughs> that was an absolute nightmare. Mm. Because we we tried it for ages, and it's just <laughs> it's a pain getting to the end. And yeah, then the end's even more of a pain. I'm gonna say I think it took us ten hours to do the brother I boss fight at the end. Yep, we tried it with tank DPS healer troller, two DPS healer troller. I think that's when we finished it, wasn't it? Two DPS. I think so. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, of course was... everything. Was just attacking me <laughs> constantly. Yeah. It was, oh, it's horrible. I mean, I get a fair amount of aggro already with nature, but yeah, that was crazy. But bear in mind, we we did this back back in the day when we was, I suppose, coming up to full tier two. Oh, but this was before utility belts and super Four deep mods, buff colas and mods. Yeah, so this was when Inner Sanctum was one of the top raids to do. At the time. Nowadays, you just like breeze through it without just give a the care in the world. It's one of the highlights of my life. <laughs> <laughs> you did, you did so all the end of it, didn't you? Last yeah. five percent or something, you were uh, jumping about. On your yeah, own. desperately trying to avoid Brother Right. I think it was Batman who actually finished off Brother Right. <laughs> His Batarang throw. <laughs> one last question for you, Mitch. Do you think healers are well represented in DC at the moment, or do you think there's an imbalance in the classes? Um, do you think there's not, enough healers? Well, there's never enough healers, really, is there? Because, I mean, it's, just, it's the same with all the roles. There's never enough tanks, trolls, or healers. Everybody, mm. as soon as they come in, wants to be a DPS. So it's what only when you... they start. Uh, well, yeah, this is my advice to everyone. Have, it, have a crack at it. Have a go at playing your... Alternative role, you might enjoy it. You heard it here first, guys. Have a crack at it. That's what Mitch would say. <laughs> okay, then, Mitch. Well, if that's everything, it's been really nice to talk to you tonight. Thank you for you coming too, on the show. And Thanks for good, me. good luck with the healing, and long may it continue. Cheers. And there, we just had our interview with Mitch Short. Uh, quite a good guy I've I mean he's the, been the person that I've known longest in DC since I've been playing he was the first person that I actually spoke to uh, it's nice to get his view on healing and uh, I think that wraps up the lockbox for us this week yep. thank you to Sen Borsha and Tesseract for joining us and we hope to see you all again in the next episode and remember kids it ain't never rats